Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Continue to celebrate in the season of Easter. Uh, we also are continuing Servant Week this week. We are focusing on different uh, servant leaders throughout the Bible. Today we're going to talk about Moses. Uh, still got a uh, number of great things this week. And if you haven't picked up one of those green sheets yet, you need to do that. So you find out how to connect with what's going on. Uh, a lot of uh, things tonight and, and throughout the week. Uh, we'll sing our song uh, with the band after our message. So um, we'll begin with the invocation, the reading, and the message. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our text is one single verse from Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. Now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends in Christ, one month from today is the last day of final exams. In one line, it's law and gospel. I could be done right now. The semester's going to end. The semester's going to end. There's a lot to do in the next month, isn't there? But we look toward the end, toward what's coming, toward that. And, and in one way or another, we'll make it to the end. We have before, if you're a freshman, you see others around who have, and you know that there's life after final exams. But if you're a sophomore, junior, senior, super senior, you've done it before, you know you'll make it in some way. But the better question might be, how are you gonna make it to the end? What skills are you going to rely on that you have, what super student abilities that you are gonna unleash in the next month just to show everyone that you're great under pressure? Well, that's a pretty good one, that you, uh, you actually can do more than one thing at a time. You multitask and, and can write three papers at once. That's a great thing. But what are your best qualities, if you had to put your finger on it? What's your best quality? Well, a lot of people are humble enough to say, well, I don't know. Ah. I once saw an interview that was done with a woman who advises models on how to do interviews. Some of the most beautiful women in the world that when they're interviewed and they said a common question you'll be asked is, what, what physical quality about yourself do you, do you like the least? That they ask these beautiful women. And this one who was advising the women on how to do these interviews said, pick out whatever your best quality is and say, well, I really don't like my eyes if you have the most beautiful eyes. And they'll look at your eyes and they'll say, well, they're beautiful and they won't notice the flaw. Fascinating, isn't it? So what would possess Moses to say, now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. Guess who wrote that? Moses. God inspired Moses to write that. We can't argue with it, really. That's a fascinating thing. Actually, if you look in a different translation in the ESV, it says, now, the man Moses was very meek, more than all the people who were on the face of the earth. Charlton Heston does not strike me as meek. That's not the word that really applies to him so much, or maybe even humble. And when you look at the career of Moses throughout the Pentateuch, Humility is maybe not what rises to the surface. It's an interesting dynamic on what Moses was given as his great ability to do what he had to do, to be a servant leader, to lead God's people to the promised land. It's interesting that the word humble or meek, as it's translated here, actually the best translation of it would be this to acknowledge total dependence on God. That's what it means. To be humble, to acknowledge total dependence on God. In other words, I can't do it. He has to be the one who does it. Maybe that makes a little more sense, and that connects a little better. But it's interesting that the most humble man on the earth, Moses, the one who knew more, better than anyone else that you have to acknowledge your total dependence on God, even he could not do that 
to the way it needed to be done. He could not be perfectly humble. Do you remember some of Moses' great moments? Pharaoh, let my people go, part the waters, all that stuff. Do you remember some of Moses' other moments? In Numbers chapter 20, where the people didn't have water, and Moses said to God, how are they going to get water? These people you've given me to lead. And God said, just speak to the rock and water will gush out of the rock. And instead of speaking to the rock, Moses made a big show of it and took his staff and struck it twice. Boom, boom. And said, must we, me and Aaron, bring you water out of this rock? And the water gushed forth. And Moses made a big show of it. He took credit for what God was doing. He promoted himself instead of God. The most humble man on the earth promoted himself instead of God. And God said, because of that, you're not going to get to the promised land. The very last chapter of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 34, after this 40 years of wandering, after Moses' whole great goal to get the people to the promised land, and God said this. He takes him up on the, on the Mount Nebo, and he lets him look, and he says, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. No promised land for you, Moses. What do you do when God says, no promised land for you? I know you've been working really hard. I know this is a big thing that you want to happen. But it's not going to happen. How do you react to that? Do you acknowledge your total dependence on God then and in all humility say, well, I guess that's how it will be? It's a tricky thing about serving God, about being a leader in some way of his people, of your peers. Balancing humility, accomplishing things. And there are great models that we have in our midst and Moses to top them all. But the significant thing is that none of us is able to get where we are going on our own. It has to be the total reliance upon God. You find it maybe more stinging and more true with Moses than, than with anyone else. The end of his life. It's not going to happen. In the disappointment though, there's a fascinating ray of hope that shines through. Did Moses ever get there? Was Moses a failure as a servant leader? No. The people got there. It just wasn't him. And so one thing to realize and acknowledge is that it's not about you. It's about what God lays before that, that is done. And it may be you and it may be someone else. Did Moses ever get to the promised land? Yeah, he did. If you turn to the New Testament, to the transfiguration of Jesus, where Jesus is shown in his brilliance, dazzling, brighter than anyone could ever imagine, there's two people there with him, Moses and Elijah. He did make it to the promised land. It was a different one than he was thinking of in the Middle East. It was a greater promised land. God fulfilled that promise to him in a way that he couldn't have known or imagined at that time. Being a servant leader is realizing that it's not about you, that it's God's plan that rings true. Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. What quality do you have that you'll call upon 
again and again in the next weeks to help make it through to the end. That is a gift of God, whatever it is, or the multiple things that allow you to do all that you're called to do. But more than anything, it's the total reliance upon God that will get you to the end, to his glory. In Jesus' name, amen.